Hey, Battle Bill here with another video, and today we're going to get into some more Master League Go Battle League battles. In today's clip, things are going to be a little bit differently. I'm going to go over a set of five battles, but they're actually from a friend of mine who doesn't have a YouTube, but he's a very skilled trainer, and he wanted to showcase something a little bit unique, and it was something that I definitely wanted to see firsthand, because it's something I haven't tested myself, and that is Snorlax with Heavy Slam and Super Power as the moveset, because usually people are running uh, their Snorlaxes with Body Slam and Super Power, or body slam an earthquake and I enjoy the spice I feel like that heavy slam could definitely help in the Togekiss matchup and for this set along with that Snorlax in the back he's running Kyogre and Dialga and Kyogre is going to be his lead so this uh, clip that I'm going to go over here is from him and I'm going to have less cutting in it because he sent me the clip so if there's any like awkward downtime or little in-betweens where I run out of things to say that's just because I'm using a different clip and it's a little bit more difficult for me to edit. I'm still working on that part of the YouTube video stuff. So, let's get into the first battle. He leads with Kyogre and the first Pokemon he sees is Melmetal. This is a great lead for him. Everybody's running Melmetal as a lead. It's a positive matchup for him. All he needs to do here is go straight for the Surf. And depending on shielding, he should be able to come away with winning this lead matchup. The Melmetal is going for his charge move here and ends up being Rock Slide, which lands. He decides not to shield that one, but I'm assuming when the Melmetal gets to this next Rock Slide here, that he's going to throw up his shield, which makes sense. Because as long as he plays this out, you know, shield for shield and matches, he should win this without there being much issue. But his opponent goes for a really good swap there as he goes for the next Surf. So that was pretty impressive. The Surf's now going to land on a Giratina. And I'm assuming what his next move is going to be after he goes for a couple more waterfalls is to bring in his Snorlax, which he does. So the one thing you only have to worry about when you're running Snorlax against uh, Giratina is that Snorlax carrying Dragon Pulse. But even then, it's not that big of a concern. His, that Giratina is running Dragon Pulse, so you see how much damage it does there. And the plan, I guess, with running Heavy Slam and Super Power as the moveset is the Heavy Slam is quicker to get to than Earthquake is. Now, it doesn't do as much damage. You saw how much damage it just did to the Giratina, but it was a, a little bit quicker for him to get to instead of having to go all the way to an Earthquake, and Lick doesn't exactly charge energy that fast. So that's definitely one positive of running um, Heavy Slam and Super Power. And now we're just going to wait. His Giratina went down, and we're going to see if he decides to bring in this uh, Melmetal or not. His opponent does, and here's another positive of having that Helm Heavy Slam and Super Power. He could throw that Super Power for super effective damage on his opponent's Melmetal without having to go all the way to an Earthquake. So those are two positives right off the bat with this uh, moveset. And now his Snorlax goes down, but the Melmetal is practically dead itself. So we'll see what his decision ends up being to farm down the Melmetal. He brings in Kyogre. His Kyogre is almost down. down. Honestly, I mean, it, it, it seems to be working out for him anyway because his opponent brings in Dialga and he can go for the Surf here. But I, I think that he might have been better off just bringing in the Dialga immediately to farm down the Melmetal. But then again, you don't want to take that chance because if the Melmetal has a superpower stored up somehow, then you got to worry about shielding it. So after he brought in his Dialga, his opponent ended up quitting and he ends up taking game one. So it doesn't matter what I have to say. He ends up winning the match and it goes really well. But that match I felt like was a really good one. We're getting into the second one here. It really showcased how you can get that good neutral damage on Giratina with Heavy Slam and still have that good super effective damage against Melmetal with Super Power instead of having to constantly go for the Earthquakes when you run Body Slam Earthquake on your Snorlax because you need the Earthquakes to deal damage to the Giratinas and Melmetals in those situations. So getting into this next matchup, he actually runs into another Melmetal, funny enough. That Melmetal is going to land the Rock Slide here. And similar to the first match, all he needs to do is match the opponent's Melmetal shield for shield and throw Surfs, and he will end up winning lead in this scenario. So we're just going to watch him throw their quick moves. His opponent's going for another Rock Slide here. I'm assuming he's going to end up shielding this up. He actually decides not to shield this up. Interesting. I wonder what the thought process was. His opponent decides to switch, and he goes for the immediate switch, and now we have a Dialga on Dialga mirror match. If you look at the CPs at the top, you can see that his Dialga not only is it best buddied, but is a much stronger Dialga than his opponent's Dialga. So he decides to shield the Iron Head here, and what he can essentially do is commit to the farm down with Dragon Breath. 
he decide, I guess he got a little worried that his opponent was going to get to the next Iron Head, so he decides to go for it anyway. Notice how he's not fully charging it up, because the Iron Head will take out the Dialga. But he still has a good chunk of residual energy, so he can throw this Iron Head when his opponent's Melmetal comes right back in. So either way, really good play. Definitely a smart way to go about things. His opponent decides to shield, and now he's just getting in as much Dragon Breath damage as possible, and his opponent can't really go for a Rock Slide. It's not going to take him out. So his opponent goes for a superpower, takes out the Dialga, and now he can kind of just go back into mirroring the Kyogre onto the Melmetal. Let's see what he decides to do. He does decide to do that. The Waterfalls end up causing a simultaneous KO because the Melmetal was debuffed from its own superpower. So here we have a equal shield matchup of Snorlax on Swampert. Now this matchup is definitely an interesting one considering the new moveset. If he was running Body Slam on his Snorlax, then all he would need to do is Body Slam, spam the Swampert, and I'm pretty confident he would end up winning this matchup. But here, now he has Heavy Slam and Super Power, so he's over farming. He's going to go for the Heavy Slam as a bait, even though it's a little bit more energy, because the Heavy Slam will get the shield, like he just did, and he doesn't have to worry about the nerf. So now he continues to lick up, his opponent's going for another Hydro Can here. He has to shield it up. But you'll notice my friend overcharged. And what we're going to find out is that overcharge costs him because his opponent is able to pull off two Hydro Cannons before he could get the click through for a superpower. And considering his Swampert, the opponent's Swampert was not a Hundo Swampert, it was actually 29 21. I'm pretty confident that Superpower would have done enough damage to take out his Swampert and end up winning the match. So even though. I think having Body Slam and Earthquake would have been the better moveset against the Swampert in that situation. He still could have pulled it out. Unfortunately, he overfarmed and ended up costing him. Now, let's get into the third match of the set. My friend is going up against Sean Emon83. And he's obviously sticking with the same team, so he's got the Kyogre lead up against his opponent's Giratina Origin. So now this is a matchup where Kyogre ends up losing, especially because my friend is running Thunder on his Kyogre instead of Blizzard. So he immediately swaps out, brings in Dialga. My opponent matches him by bringing in his nice shiny Rhyperior. I wonder if that's a Hundo CP. Is that a Shundo? That'd be crazy. Either way, my friend's going for his Iron Head here. And the good thing, at least for Dialga in this matchup, even though his Mud Slaps from Rhyperior are going to really chunk at it, is at least has access to Iron Head, which would deal super effective damage against the Rhyperior. His opponent's going for a charge move here, which ends up being Surf. My friend decides not to shield it, which I think might have hurt him in this match a little bit. Because if you notice, he'll get super close to that Iron Head before going down. If he could have, um, if he would have shielded, he could have gotten to the Iron Head and kind of forced the oppo his opponent's last shield or taken out the right period. But what ends up working out in this situation is that he brings in his Kyogre, and even though he's going to take the Surf, from the Rhyperior, barely does any damage, and he can waterfall the Rhyperior down and kind of get some extra energy on his own Kyogre. So I guess, either way, both are still positive ways to play out the matchup. Waiting to see what his opponent brings in, he brings in his uh, Giratina. Luckily, my friend has a Snorlax in the back to kind of deal with the Giratina. Giratina goes for Ominous Wind, gets the boost, so now we got to be more careful how he decides to play this out. My, opponent deci my friend decides to go for the Surf on his Kyogre, which isn't going to do major damage, but it does at least get the shield. So now he swaps immediately to the Snorlax. And even though the Giratina has a boost, that Snorlax is still going to completely wall it. So my, the opponent swaps him out, brings in a Machamp, and the Machamp is going to deal some solid damage against his Snorlax. But luckily, he does have two shields. So when this Cross Chop comes through, he can shield it. And I feel like this would be more of a positive situation to have Body Slam and Earthquake, because you can get to those Body Slams quicker, and they'll deal almost about the same damage as his Heavy Slam is that's about to go through because they're both neutral. But either way, my friend now goes for the Super Power and this will do more than enough damage to take out the Machamp. So it seems to kind of work itself out regardless of the moveset in this in this uh, scenario. But now he's got a bit of an issue because he threw that Super Power and his Snorlax is now debuffed. So Giratina's coming through with the Charge move, ends up being another Ominous Winds. And he ends up getting the boost again. Isn't that crazy? So my friend swaps in his Kyogre to kind of clear the debuff on the Snorlax. And the Giratina throws its energy on the Kyogre. Faints it. But now luckily, not luckily, smartly, his Snorlax is no longer debuffed. So even though that Giratina origin has the boost, the moves won't be doing as much damage because the nerf is cleared. So now my friend CMP tied. He's going for the Heavy Slam. 
and this will do a solid chunk of damage to the Giratina even though it's boosted and luckily he has access to those licks and can commit to the lick down to end up winning that match so the cards are really stacked against my friend in this in this match he got the boost on two separate occasions it wasn't like he left in the Giratina got the boost back to back got the boost swapped out brought Giratina back in got the boost again that was crazy but luckily he had Snorlax to deal with it and I don't really think the moveset had too much of an effect because if he was running Body Slam Earthquake, he could have gotten the Earthquakes off on the Giratina and the Body Slams off on the Machamp in that situation. So I, I think it was kind of like a moot point. It worked out either way. So now we get into the fourth match and we have a Kyogre on Kyogre lead. Now this one is very, this is a very moveset dependent match. You can run your Kyogres with Blizzard or Thunder as the third move because you definitely got to run Surf. And if you're running Blizzard, that would be good for Giratinas, but it would kind of hold you back in this Kyogre versus Kyogre matchup because the Thunder will deal super effective damage to the opposing Kyogre. My friend goes for the Surf, his opponent blocks it, they CMP tied. Yeah, that was a, that's the CMP tie. Interesting, because I've watched this clip before, so what happens next is interesting. His opponent throws a Surf, and he decides to shield it. So now it's really just a race to the Thunder, depending on if his opponent has it or not. And they CMP tie again, but he loses the CMP tie. So that's fascinating. I guess, because if you look, the C CPs aren't the same. But I'm guessing maybe functionally they have the same stats. And if you look deep into the stats, if they have the same, then CMP tie is, the CMP tie is randomized. It's not really based on the actual CP of the Pokemon. But anyhow, continuing with this match, his opponent gets off another Surf. Which does a little bit of damage to the Dialga. And unfortunately, they CMP tied on that. So now he's forced to throw the Iron Head and take out the Kyogre, which kind of just wasted his energy. So now we're waiting for his opponent. His opponent brings in his own Dialga. And I guess that throwing that energy kind of cost him in this match. Because he'll get to another Iron Head here, but he could have maybe baited a Draco Meteor if he had the extra energy or gotten to two Iron Heads. But either way, he's going to throw this Iron Head, his opponent's going to shield, and then commit to the Dragon Breath farm down. So now he's kind of stuck in a bad situation where his Snorlax has to take on the Dialga with a ton of energy, and a Gear well, I, I already know the other Pokemon in the back, but it ends up being a Giratina Origin. His opponent throws the Draco Meteor, and at this point he really has no chance. It doesn't really matter what the moveset is, because the Snorlax had no energy against that um, Dialga. And now the opponent's Giratina Origins charge move is coming through. Ends up being a Dragon Pulse, so he shields it. So just to add icing on the cake, it's not even like if he would have shielded the Draco Meteor, he would have been fine because his opponent has Dragon Pulse, and those Dragon Pulses would have added up. If his opponent was running Ominous Wind and Shadow Ball, and he would have shielded the um, Draco Meteor that came from the Dialga, he might have had a better chance to win depending on movesets. Because if he was running Body Slam Earthquake, he could have just kept on going for Earthquakes to land on the Giratina and Dialga. And with Heavy Slam Superpower, he could have landed the Heavy Slams on the Giratina to kind of chunk it down and then farm it up. Because if it was running only Ghost type moves, he would have resisted to then throw Superpowers at the Dialga. So I guess it really, he didn't have a chance there, but I'm just thinking through the situations where if he would have shielded the Draco Meteor and he was in the right matchup where that Giratina didn't have Dragon Pulse, he could have possibly won with either of the movesets. Regardless, getting into the last match, we got Kyogre on Melmetal. We know how this matchup plays out. We've seen it a bunch of times already. My uh, friend is going for Surf here, and as long as he matches Shields, he'll win out this uh, matchup, this lead matchup. His opponent decides to Shield the first Surf, so now we're going to wait on my friend's decision. He decides not to Shield his opponent's Rock Slime. And he'll continue to waterfall at the Melmetal, and he's gonna kind of have, yeah, he's gonna have to shield this next rock slide that's coming through, so he does. And he can commit to going for the next surf, but his opponent decides to swap and bring in a Giratina. So he does the immediate swap and goes for his Snorlax. So at this point, he's just gonna commit to licking it down. We're gonna hope that the Giratina doesn't have Dragon Pulse on it. When this charge move comes through, we're gonna find out right now if it does. It does not, it has Ominous Wind. So his Snorlax can have a field day with this Giratina. His opponent's going for another charge move here. I'm assuming it's probably going to be another Ominous Wind. He's just going to hope for the boost. Either that or he's going to hope to just throw as many charge moves as possible to kill out the switch timer and then swap his Giratina out of this situation. But he goes for the Heavy Slam. Does a little bit, does a nice little chunk. And this scenario also, I feel like he would have been fine if he would have had Body Slam and Earthquake. 
because he's still going to be able to farm up the Giratina. He could have thrown an Earthquake and then just completely licked it down to get a bunch of energy for the next Pokemon. But at the same time, because the Switch Timer runs out, the Melmetal comes in and it ends up being a positive that he's running Heavy Slam and Superpower because he can then throw the Superpower unshielded on the Melmetal. He can essentially sack his Kyogre, even though Kyogre had energy, so I would have debated possibly shielding just to farm down and throw the energy, but he decides not to. It, it looks like it might work out either way. He's waiting the switch timer out, brings in a Snorlax. It's no longer debuffed because he swapped it out. Licks down the Melmetal, and now a Dark Rye comes in, and now this ends up being really important that he's running Heavy Slam and Super Power because Super Power is super effective against Dark Rye and Dark Rye is glassy. So he goes for the first Super Power, his opponent shields it. His opponent's going for a charge move now. I guess because he's debuffed no matter what his opponent throws, he definitely wants to shield it and hope that he overformed enough that he can get to another Super Power. Because Dark Rye, even though it's glassy with Snarl, charges up energy really quick. So luckily though, because it's glassy, that second superpower did a solid chunk. He brings in Dialga, and this was risky because if he farms up enough, his Dark Ride could have gotten to a Focus Blast and landed it. But didn't end up happening. Dragon Breath's the Dark Ride down and the Giratina and ends up taking this match and pulls through with a solid 3 2 set. So I would definitely recommend testing Snorlax with Heavy Slam and Superpower if you have these Pokemon, because I don't have Max Kyogre or Max Dialga, which is why we're looking at my friend's clip here and not mine. But if you do have those Pokemon, I would definitely test out this three. Definitely seems really well balanced. It worked out well. He was losing in certain situations. Was 3-2. and two. If he played out that Swabbert matchup better earlier on in the set, it could have been 4-1. So overall, depending on the Pokemon you're seeing a lot of, it might be better to try out Heavy Slam and Super Power. We didn't see a single Togekiss in this set, which was interesting. But the Heavy Slam would have definitely been beneficial against uh, Togekiss. Um, trying to think of other situations where maybe Body Slam and Earthquake would work itself out better. Like that Machamp matchup, you could have spammed the Body Slams and the Machamp more, so depending on that. But overall, both are usable movesets, and that's the important thing to take away from this video. So if you have the TMs, or if you have a second Snorlax you want to max out, because that's literally what I did. I have, a, I have a 98 Snorlax that's now running Heavy Slam and Super Power, and then I have a Hundo Snorlax that I maxed out to then make sure I had at least another Pokemon with, or another Snorlax with Body Slam and Earthquake. So I don't have to keep on using TMs to swap between movesets because Snorlax has a lot of different moves. So if you don't have a bunch of TMs, I would not recommend testing this out. If you have a second Snorlax, I'd recommend testing this out. If you have over 200 charge TMs like I do, I'd recommend uh, testing this out. Let me know what you think and let me know if there's another moveset that you might want to run on your Snorlax because I kind of gone through a bunch of them. Anyhow, don't forget, like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate all you guys. These videos are picking up a lot of momentum and I'm going to just continue enjoying this. So I will see you in the next video.